listening is to even understand what is cheating, right? What is cheating in a relationship? Because sometimes I've actually seen relationships in which, um, you know, this is one of my favorite relationships I've observed in any of my friends. They're a slightly older couple. They have two kids in their twenties and she loves to dance, right? She's always going out there dancing. He, not so much. And so the first time we all went out together, me with that couple, uh, we went to a club and she was just dancing on her own. She was dancing with a bunch of other guys. And he was standing at the bar just having a drink. So I went up to him first and I was like, man, like, are you okay with this? Because in my experience and limited knowledge at that time, I thought it wasn't good. So I was like, dude, are you okay with your wife? Not even fiance, not even girlfriend. Are you okay with your wife dancing all these men? He's like, yeah, man, because I don't enjoy dancing that much. And she does enjoy dancing. And I know how she feels when she gets to dance. She comes home so fulfilled and happy. It's like me when he loves racing. And so she travels around the world with him going for all the formula and races, which she hates, but she does it because she understands that's what he needs to feel like loved and connected. And he said it actually brings our relationship closer. And these two, like they, when you look at them, the sexual chemistry and magnetism between them is amazing. They party together all the time. They're so social. They've been together so long. And they're amazing parents. I've seen them with their kids who are in their 20s and they're amazing. And that was the first time for me, I think I recognized how, how much the dynamics of different relationships are different. And as long as two people in the relationship set the agreements and set the dynamics, that is all that I believe matters in a relationship. So when you think of cheating, cheating is when one person, yes, breaks the other person's trust, but more importantly, it's when one person breaks the agreement of the relationship or the connection that um, was designed to be had. And as we go along in life and relationships, we have to keep evolving our, um, we have to keep evolving our agreements, no? Because we're in different stages of our lives. Like when we're parents, um, before we're parents, when we're just dating, they're all different agreements. So I think what cheating really is, is when an individual breaks the agreements that are created with a, a pair. And that's why what's important is to actually create the right agreements together, even just subtly talking about them so that they're understood between each other. And then once you do that, it allows people to have their individual expressions in a relationship to so feel like I'm not being closed off, I'm not being constrained. It allows each individual to thrive. And therefore, in my opinion, it allows the relationship to thrive. Because then you have two people who are feeling fulfilled as relationships, as individuals coming together. And cheating doesn't only have to be sexual. It doesn't even only have to be sensual. It can just be emotional, you know? I mean, sometimes you can have a partner um, who wants to be your best friend. And when you have another best friend of the same sex on the outside and you're really connecting with them, it can feel very invalidating to this particular partner. So then you have to have an agreement around, okay, I want you or I'm going to be your source for all your emotion, emotional security, love, backup, et cetera. And in our relationship, I don't know if I'm okay with you having that level of connection with people outside. Whereas there's other relationships where that part isn't an issue. So I think it's really about the agreement between two people is what sets the standard of what is um, the healthy dynamic and agreement in a, in a partnership. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I think healthy vulnerable conversation is one of the the biggest most important pieces that's missing in so many relationships because of exactly yeah. what you just said because we a lot of times we go into relationships and it's very unconscious like the way that we're showing up and then there's like this dynamic that plays out or like whatever the relationship is and like there's just we have like when you talk about having agreements in a relationship but like how many people actually sit down to talk about, you know, this is how I feel loved. This is how I feel cared for. Um, this is what I want from you and vice versa, right? Because relationships are so much about um, not necessarily meeting the other person's needs 100% or compromising 100% because again, like too much one way is going to create resentment or, or self uh, abandonment on either side, which isn't healthy either. But really, yeah, everything you're saying, like these agreements and relationships and they're so unique to the relationship like to that couple which is also really really important and one last thing i'll say before i i ask you a question mm -hmm. uh, is that like when you're looking at a couple 
and what their agreements are, it's so important to look at the intention. So like, especially like what you're talking about with, you know, that couple that, you know, you know, her, the woman's intention to like dance with men, it probably wasn't to make her husband jealous. Mm -hmm. It probably wasn't to like, you know, just like sucker punch him and be like, you bastard, you didn't, you know, you canceled on me last weekend. So I'm going to like stick it to you or like protest behavior. Really, they, their agreement was really just like, hey, like, I want to dance because I feel alive. It makes me feel sensual. And like, I do, I kind of need another person to, to do that. And so you can kind of see how that intention was very pure and it was also mutually agreed upon. So that's why it works. And so the reason why I say that is also because, you know, like when we even look at, um, for example, like I do know people who like might bring another person into the relationship or there's, you know, the, um, polyamorous relationships out there. And so the one thing I ask and everybody is just coming back to, well, like, what's your intention? You know, like, cause some people they'll, they'll have like another person in the relationship. And the intention is because it's keeping them from deep connection with their partner, with like their, yeah. the, with like, you know, the person that they're, they're really vulnerability, preventing yeah. them from bearing themselves, you know, escaping the possibility of rejection because, you know, I still have someone on the side and, you know, that's yeah. sometimes that's what I think of polyamorous relationships is that they're an escape from, you know, commitment and, Commitment can be challenging for those of us who don't have a good and healthy education on it, which is also what this call is going to be about. 